Here's example one, and the first step of my strategy is to read and diagram. So a ball rolls off a 1.42 meter high table, ball on a table, has a speed of 2.63 meters per second, it's rolling horizontally, and it rolls off, and it says how far from the base of the table does it land. Here's my diagram. I draw a table, just a quick sketch. I put a ball at the top, it's rolled off the table. I put the original x velocity, it's given as 2.63 meters per second, and then it goes through the typical trajectory and lands on, on the ground. And I label dx, I'm looking for that, and I know the height of the table, so the dy is a negative or a down 1.42 meters. All right, so that's my first step. My second step uses an XY table in order to ID the knowns and the unknowns. So here's my XY table, and I have to fill it out. Now, it's a projectile, so you know the bottom row. AX is zero, AY is negative 9.8. And since it's horizontally launched, there's no original y velocity, so I know VOY is zero. Now there's two numbers here. There's a velocity, 2.63, and that's an original velocity x word. So I put that in the table along with the 1.42 meters for the dy. It went down, so I put a negative 1.42 meters. Now that takes, oh, and what I'm looking for is dx. Now that takes care of my ID the knowns, ID the unknown. Now I want to pick an equation or equations and I want to solve for my unknown dx value. So if I look Look in my table. What I notice is I have three bits of information in the y column. So I'm going to look for a vertical equation that has dy, voy, and ay in it. And I'm going to use it to solve for time. So here's your equations right here. And it's the first one top left that has just what I need to solve for time. So I'm going to use that equation. I write it down and then I'm going to substitute values of dy and ay and voy into the equation. Now the second term is negative 4.9t squared. And that just comes from one half times negative 9.8 t squared. That's already been substituted for me. But what I can do is put negative 1.42 meters in for dy, and then I can put uh, zero in for voy, and that means the first term on the right side cancels out. Zero times time is zero. So now I can divide both sides of the equation by 4.9, and I end up with the negative 1.42 divided by negative 4.9 equal t squared. And I can take the square root of each side, and I get myself a time. And I'm not going to round the value. I'm just going to write down 0.5383 blah, 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 and I'm going to keep the number on my calculator because I'm going to use that number. Now, take a deep breath. You're ready to finish up. We use the y column to get the time. So now we're going to use information from the x column to get the dx. So here's the one x equation we have. It's just one that you'll ever use. The only one you'll ever use is this one. So dx equal vox times t. And vox is given to me as 2.63, and I just calculated the time. So I'm going to take the number on my calculator, the time, and I'm going to multiply by 2.63 and I solve for dx. And then there's rules for how you round things. Pay attention to what your teacher suggests. Typically, they have to do a significant digit. So you don't have to write out 16 numbers on your sheet of paper. You just write 1.42 meters, three significant digits here.